All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Snow Panda Gaming and to EU4 today. We are checking out the new Cradle of Civilization DLC that just came out a couple of days ago. And we're going to have a single player game starting from the 1444 start, Rise of the Ottomans. And I think we're going to play as the Ottomans as well. Uh, when this game was released up till now, the Ottomans have been the powerhouse of the game, like uh, almost overpowered. But um, I had some uh, multiplayer games yesterday, and it seems that's not the case anymore. Mamluks is the new master of the house in Middle East. Um, so the Ottoman gameplay shouldn't be that uh, easy anymore. I mean, it's going to be still easy, they're really strong, but you know, it's not going to be a total uh, run over all the other states. Uh, there's a lot of changes here, a lot of new uh, areas and a lot of new factions and and, and the QQ, Karakunul and, and AQ, Aquinlu has, have been buffed as well. They have their own government types now, same as Mamluks. Himaris is no longer a horde, they are Ikta, so it's the Muslim version of the uh, feudal state. And they have Transoxiana, uh, Khorasan, Sistan, Afghanistan, Fars as their vassals here. Uh, like a vassal of Timurid, all these states here. Adjam is not, it's an independent nation and that's usually... I played a um, multiplayer game yesterday where I was Timurid, my friend was Mamluks and uh, my other friend was Genoa. Uh, and I'm telling you, I mean, Timurid is easier than before, but it's it's still pretty hard. I mean, the thing with Timurid is they have this great Sultan, uh, Ruk Timurid, who is 67 years old. And he has this, uh, like a trait, which gives minus 50% liberty desire for all vassals, uh, which is great. It it makes the their really rebellious because there's so many and their power compared to you is quite, quite high so it makes it payable but this guy is 67 years old and when he's when he's not gone and he's dead uh, you know that that trait is gone as well so I struggled a lot I managed to keep this together I, I managed to we played about 40 years and I managed to incorporate first Afghanistan then Fars, Sistan and uh, then I had Corson as a March and Transoxiana, so uh, it's pretty hard, really. And um, but yeah, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to do Ottomans, and in our game, Ottomans really struggled. First of all, we had Genoa, um, my good friend Bekis, and uh, earlier my other friend as um, as Mamluks, and um, they really contained. Uh, Ottomans pretty well, um, but uh, we'll see. If you've never played EU4, this is not a tutorial game. This is a look on the features. I will probably do a tutorial game, like I did for my Crusader Kings 2 gameplay, which should be up before this, actually, on YouTube. So check that out if you're interested in the Jade uh, Tiger. I think is the New DLC for Crusader Kings 2, but this is not a tutorial. I will probably make it later if I have the time. But uh, there's so many games coming out, uh, like uh, Total of War, uh, Rome Tombs getting a new DLC, and uh, there's going to be Total of War Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires going to get the Norska patch in uh, hopefully end of this month, hopefully end of this year, at least. And then there's going to be the new Total War Saga. Uh, uh, it was about Viking and Britannia. So that's going to be coming in spring. So a lot of games to play. So, but uh, we'll, we'll have a quick look around on, on, on the Ottomans and new features and have a, hopefully a full playthrough here. So let's dive into it. We're going to play as the 1444 start. Ottomans. I think we're going to play a normal. I don't really like... The, I don't like arbitrary uh, like difficulty where 
this doesn't make the AI any smarter, it just gives them more bonuses. And I don't feel like that's fun to me. For some people, I guess it is, but not for me. I'm gonna keep the Lucky Nations historical and everything else as default as well. And we're gonna play in our Iron Man game, which means we can earn achievements. Alright, let's dive in. We're gonna type this as YouTube Kebab. Which is their nickname in the YouTube. Uh, I mean, in the <laughs> internet. Alright, so... This is new as well. It's uh, like a info screen on what your nation you're playing as, and we are the Ottoman Sultanate. The Ottomans in 1444 are a regional power in the process of securing control over Anatolia and the Balkans. In the east, Ottoman control has been reimposed in the aftermath of the Timurid invasion, but several Beylik, Beyliks remain independent. These bays jockey for a position between the expanding power of the Ottomans on one side and the Mamluks, Mamluk Empire of Egypt and Syria, still the strongest state in the Middle East, on the other. And they have actually reflected that now in game. We start with less, than, less development now with the Ottomans than the Mamluks. In Europe, the Ottomans have defeated the Crusaders in the Battle of Varna, killing Vladislav, the Polish and Hungarian king, uh, Byzantium now, now lies exposed and Hungary has been forced on the defensive, but with the fortress of Belgrade still serves as a strong bulwark against further Ottoman expansion. The lesser princes in between can survive only by playing their great powers off one another. Further south, uh, Skanderberg leads Albania here in a revolt against the Ottomans, Ottomans supported by Venice, which still dominates the seas. The change they, that they have made is that the independence is now guaranteed by Venice. So, that's different as well. Um, the realm ruled by the Ottoman dynasty is not yet centralized state in 1444. The Sultan's authority is enforced only by his small household of servants, recruited from slaves captured in, the, in war and from the De Devshirn, <laughs> sorry if I butchered that, the periodic uh, conscription of Christian youths from the Balkan countryside. These are the famous Janissaries who will in time grow into a powerful standing army. The Ottomans have come to power with military backing of numerous martial lords, still highly autonomous on the Balkan frontier while the administration lies in the hands of the Turkish aristocracy, literate in the ways of statecraft, but largely independent of the Sultan's authority. All this is about to change. Having defeated the Crusader armies, the Sultan Murad II is now on his way back um, uh, is, on his, is now on his way back to his estate in Manisa leaving the government in the hands of the young Mehmed II. It is he who will go on to transform the Ottoman state into an empire, acquiring Constantinople as an imperial capital and establishing a centralized administration to reign in the martial lords and old Turkish families for the great the, the Grand Turk. There can be no compromise. The House of Osman is to be the supreme authority in the land. The only question is this, where will his armies turn up to first? Well, that's the country. Uh, we still have a lot to do. Uh, also, there's a religion tab, which uh, shows what the Sunni Islam religion uh, gives. Basically, don't have air ever, like problems getting air. Um, they have changed the piety. Uh, which was the, um, the, uh, like, system here for, for, uh, Sunni and Shia Islam religion in a whole. Uh, so, to mysticism and legalism as the end point. So, mysticism here, if you get there, you get those bonuses, mission strength, or armies, fort defense, and if you go on this scale to legalism, you get national tax modifier, Manpower modifier and uh, technology cost down. So that's different. There's also schools. Um, 
that give different bonuses, but we, we can have a look at those later. And the government is um, other Ottoman government, government type sultanates. Um, they have a designated heir, so it doesn't have to be your son. So I think Ottomans really never have problems with heirs usually. Um, and there's concerts, rural marriages. Um, Oh, maybe I think this is new. You can have, you have access to harem. This means you get, that your heirs will not be generated the normal way, but instead you get to choose from a number of candidates once you rule a third theory. I think that's actually normal. Sorry. Just uh, haven't seen that name in, in the game, but yeah, that's how it goes. You choose your heir when you're 30. Um, I think this is new, as it shows, actually, yeah. Sorry, this is this is the icon for uh, Cradle of Civilization. So with that mark, it's, it's the paid DLC. I think Rights of Man gave these two. So these are new. Your Ottoman government allows you to sign states to pashas. A pasha greatly reduces state maintenance cost and chance of revolt, but will increase the cost of constructions in the area. All right, that's interesting. Something to keep... keep uh, Mind of uh, greatly reduces state maintenance cost and revolt. Okay. Your government type also allows you to recruit janitors from heathen provinces. So, not following my religion, basically. So, I guess all from here because these are all orthodox. Uh, a special type of unit that receives lower shock and fire damage while costing more to maintain. And uh, military part. Hold on, is that especially a type of unit that receives lower shock and fire damage? Okay, so that's interesting wording, but they uh, they take less damage from shock and fire. Because that I first read it that they get lower, they receive lower shock and fire damage, which is not correct. Anyway, so they cost a bit more and uh, and military power to recruit. All right. But we'll play with those later. And this is from the Cossacks of the Estates. But if you've played this game before, you know how, how this works. Environment. Europe and the Holy Roman Empire. All right. Well, basically in Europe, we're both of like in the middle. So uh, there's nothing really new here. It just tells how Holy Roman Empire works. Uh, but we're really not part of it yet. Not sure if we ever will. We might try to dismantle it and have a proper Turkish year, as it should be, right? So that's it, and here we are. Looks like we have some uh, rivals to set. I think I'm going to set Byzantium because I think I'll, I'll just take Constantinople right away. Except, except we can't set them as a rival. That's interesting. What else do we have? Hungary and Poland. Okay. Well, we can rival them back. Who else do we want? Oregon, Austria, a bit far away. Lithuania, well, they'll probably be... Mamluks, yes, but I don't want to piss them off quite yet. Karakunlo is actually pretty good. They have some nice national ideas. People State Venice. Do I want to go with, into a war with Venice right away? You have Albania here, which we have a core on. What missions do we have? City of World Desire. I think we're going to take that. It's gonna... Do we have a core on... No, we don't. I guess we get it when we take this. Yeah, let's get that. Yeah, and we need to get a... At least a claim. Yeah, a claim on, on Constantinople. Um, expand the Dervshirn system. 
Ultimate military power. National manpower modifier until the end of game. Okay, that's nice. Let's do that. And up the title of Khalifa. And move towards legalism. Really prestige. Yes, please. Denounce sect practices. National unrest goes down. And towards legalism. Sounds good as well. Alright, so. We have some really nice ideas here. Uh, so yeah, what else is new? I think the trade thing is new. You can uh, have you have these interactions when you're an Islamic uh, nation. You can set a trading policy for each of the trade nodes. So you can uh, you can have a merchant here. We can't do it now, but, but uh, soon we will. Uh, you can trade power trade node power plus five percent or spy network. Construction plus 25% for nations which are in this trade node. Um, improve inland routes. Um, and we need to have a 50% or more trade power in that node. Gets more siege ability and artillery bonus for versus forts. That's pretty damn good, I'd say. Um, we can improve relations for 15%, but that affects the nations which are in this node as well. So Byzantium, Kandar, Hungary, Nexus, Ragusa, Knights, Wallachia, all right. Propagate religion, okay. Your pious merchant will work towards spreading the one true faith in this node. Okay, so there's 23 provinces in this node which can be converted. Okay, so we can spread our religion as well. That's interesting. Okay. So... Do we want to go against Venice? I feel like I do right away. I think I'll keep that available for a moment. Centium is on almost dead. So what we'll do is put these on Protecting trade somewhere. Ragusa seems pretty nice. Plus 78. That's a lot. Seems like the smartest thing to do right now. I'm gonna get our galley up and move these forces. Crush those. We have long leader, who is really good. Three, 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 one. I think it's worse than it was, though. Let me get a new one. Oh, and you can now re rename your generals. That's nice. Fifty. And there's army f professionalism. That's a new thing as well. Oh my God. Three, two, three, zero. That's pretty good. So yeah, in the military tab, there's this this bar here. Army professionalism. Army professionalism is how dependent your country is on mercenary or professional armies. It increases by drilling units or recruiting generals, but decreases if you recruit mercenaries. Um, and um, let's see, in this side there's army professionalism. No, this is a professional army. And then. Um, I guess the mercenaries are in this side. So if army professionalism goes down, I think mercenary cost goes down and available merchants goes up. Your siege ability goes up as well, okay. Let's see. Alright, it just shows the current one. But if you go up, I think your um, you get more siege ability, land fire, shock. But if you go the other way around, then you are cheaper and you you got them more. So it depends on how you wanna build your military. Really, it's more of a choice now. So uh, it's nice. So you can drill your armies by having them 
having a leader and then pressing this button. Um, so we will get yearly army professionalism plus 0.3% and a uh, yearly chance for the leader to get skill. But they also fight better. I think there's this uh, bar here which will fill up. So. Alright, what else? We are, we are swimming in money so we could hire some advisors. Get a really dis... Uh, like... Really... Expensive uh, two guy with discipline. I could not deck, but let's do that. Maybe... Maybe one number ones and these other ones. Still making a plus. Can we build more army? If we can build ten more, it should be needed actually. Yeah, let's build a few. Two, three, four, five. Five for now. We'll get to cap after we get Constantinople and move into other things. We put a spy dude here. So the siege goes a bit easier. What else do we want to do? I think we lost the course, yeah. Ottomans, they used to start with the calls to ore of all of Anatolia, but now we don't. So we actually need to forge claims. Which is interesting. I think I'll, I'll kill these little shits first. I think Dulgadir is a good start. Should we want to do conquest or... A loop spy network there. Yeah, and then we just attack. I think we don't can't attack yet. We need to wait for a month anyway. Alright, and we don't want to convert anything now. So can we do actually those janissaries? Where can we do that? Autonomy. Good regiment. Build a ship. Hire mercenaries. This is just Yaya infantry. It's not the mercenary. No, it's. I wonder where we can get the Janishers. That's something I do not know yet. But I, I guess we'll figure it out somewhere along the line. But it is these areas where it's orthodox. It needs to be hidden. You, I can't uh, hire them from here. Maybe it's actually because these are already building. Nope. Okay. Well, need to figure that out. Alright, so let's get going. Let's put it on two. Don't get any allies. Here. We could. If I need anybody, yeah, let's not do it now. Ramazan really wants to be my ally. Queen Rabizon, okay, Condor, Queen and Karaman, okay. Oh, fun. All right, guess we were ready to go to war. Take Constantinople and they will be back by Athens, which we will cross. So, confirm. We will fight. And continue. Does this have a siege? No, it doesn't. Let's see. Leave a siege and move forward. Oh no, what's this? Protest in Sugla. As men of great spiritual strength, but also firmly part of the establishment. 
Uh, numbers. What's that? Zero. Hold on. That's my boats. You go. That's dudes. That's not just my trade boats. Um, so yeah. Members of the Ulema sometimes choose to join social protests. A recent altercation between the local garrison and the urban population in Zupla have attracted the attention of prominent Mufti in the state of Aydin. Our local commander fears that situ situation might escalate unless we listen to the protesters, but doing so would come at the cost. So... I don't want some unrest now, so we'll just lose the um, a bit of tax and manpower from that one place, but that's fine. Three. Three is good, but I usually leave one more because you know, they die. Now, and this needs how many? Nine. Get the cavalry out. Don't need them. And get one more here. Go. And continue. Let's hunt those boats down. Oh, they went. Alright, let's go. I'll split in half. There. We have a seed here. We're getting a seed, right? No? Is it on the side? Can't remember. There's a detach. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so it needs nine. Go this way. We do have a hundred percent. Okay, though. I guess they just don't get minus. Can't remember. I haven't played this game in a while, except yesterday, and I was super drunk, so I don't remember anything or everything, at least. So yeah, there's Gardenberg. Yeah, he's really good. Five, five, five. Go we'll kill these fuckers too, though. Now they're allied to Hungary, so we could fight by the Hungary and Venice at the same time. Not fun. I think I'll turn myself. Maybe Valachia, Poland. Nope, that's also blocked. How about Serbia? Profiteering in uh, Adalia. The citizens of Adalia have grown tired of the local influence of greedy Albanian merchants that they claim are using unfair advantages to outcompete local businesses. They demand that we step in to limit the influence of foreign trades in the, on the area and reaffirm the villages of our own merchants and artisans. If we do not act, they might take matters in their own hands. Sure. I don't care about the opinion's opinion. At all, actually. So. Alright, so now we're sieging these down. I think we can... Should we mop all the forts? Eh, I mean... Army tradition is nice from them, so I'll just keep them on. And focus on getting. Uh, so we can use the last dude here for a while to get the claim. I think I'll kill Dulka deer first. Seems like the way to go. I don't know how to get Janus at them. 
That is something I would like to know. Maybe from here? No. Maybe it's an event we get. I think it was an event before. Are you, uh... Or you just triggered at some point. Thirty-five percent on Athens. That's really good. We need Jagiellon. Okay, so Poland now Lithuania is under under uh, as a junior partner yeah, under Poland. So that's bad actually. They're much stronger now. The quality in one of our major cities has been using his influence to in, interpret, interpret the Islamic law as well as uh, the edicts of our sultan a bit too zealously. Not content to keep the status quo in, uh, in the largely non-Muslim city, he has been trying to actively force the non-believers to convert while systematically closing down their centers of worship. After a recent suicide by a forced converted trader, Non-Muslims are now leaving the city en masse to settle somewhere more welcoming. While even the ulama largely seem to find these actions too extreme, they would likely consider any actions taken against the quality to be much worse. Oh well. That's, I feel like that's... I'm gonna do this. There's a bit of money, but fine. When is declared on Serbia? So... Hold on. I thought Serbia was... Uh... Oh, no, I don't know. Well, we'll need to find fight Venice pretty soon, actually. Siege of Athens is over. That's pretty good. Good job. But we need to get a bit stronger to fight them. Consolidate Anatolia, I suspect, first. And we go from there. Put it on three, so we get the sieges done. After that, I think I'll, I'll end the first episode. Uh, we get things going, and I want to keep this relatively short, about half an hour, three episodes, so. A couple of claims fabricated, Siege of Maria is up over, that's nice. Accept the Bosnians. Uh, military access because I actually want them to win. And so they won't, but at least a little help for them. Let's repair those. Improvements in trade technology. Our merchants have picked up a few uh, new conscripts. When it comes to handling trade, when they now encountered some foreign merchants, they think that with some investment to try it out, it will be very beneficial for Ottomans in the long run. All right, can do that. Get a bit of uh, inflation, but it's all right. Making minus note. But. Constantinople should fall soon. Oh, what is oh, Serbia is here? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're going to siege Necroponte.
So, come on. There we go. And then we pause, and then we're gonna this. We don't have dude. But right, why in one day? Dimni Dimmi building restrictions. Under Islamic law, non-Muslims faced a number of restrictions on the construction of new buildings in urban centers. Their houses were not to be taller than those of the Muslims, and they were not permitted to construct new centers of worship, only to maintain those which already existed. In practice, these rules often went unenforced, but as our realm shifts further toward a legalism interpretation of Islam, key members of ulema are beginning to call for their restrict for their stricter implementation. Enforce the letter of the law. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with this. I don't want to lose more loyalty from Ulema. Alright, so I think we're just gonna take every single thing they have, all their money, and things, and then we'll siege, siege to exist. There we go. We won. I'm gonna pause here. City of the World's Desire, we did it, yay. So now we have a decision to make Constantinople our capital, which is something you should always do, because look at the stuff you get. You get stability, uh, constant, constant, uh, Istanbul, Constantinia, it's new capital, and it changed culture and religion as well. Um, we get base tax, production manpower, and we get an empire rank, so let's do it. We have, uh, we're now sixth, so when I press that button, I think it will be a bit higher. There you go. All limiting cultures are now accepted. No, 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 that's nice. So now, we're still sixth, actually. But still a bit more up. Shoot out to corruption. And, uh, make a few fours. So we're gonna keep those lights. Conquer Levant is an interesting decision, but we don't, we shouldn't do it yet because it's here and we don't even have these here. Akunlu would make an alright ally. I think Karakunlu might be an even better ally. But we'll stay at a, as it is now. And we'll actually build seven more troops because we can. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't have none. All right. So yeah, that's gonna be it. Uh, thank you for this. I hope you'll you'll come back when we um, uh, continue our conquests. I think I'll consolidate Anatolia first. Maybe attack on Venice. I don't like them getting land here. So we'll see if we have we, we are strong enough to go after them and go on from there. Hopefully we'll have we'll cross Mamluks at some point and get Middle East as our, is our right. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.